wonderful to see you. Welcome to our webinar today. Um, we're going to get started right away because this is a jam-packed session with our guest presenter, the amazing Mukesh Patel. Um, but first, I want to um, uh, share some slides by way of introduction. If you've been with us before, you know the drill. So once again, thank you for joining us today for our masterclass on innovation, creativity, and entrepreneurial thinking. One of my favorite topics, um, you'll be meeting a very interesting person, Mukesh Patel, and learn how to create breakthrough ideas in a world of accelerating, exponential, and disruptive change. My name is Youngmi Park, and I'm a board member with the American Marketing Association, New York. Now, before introducing the fabulous Mukesh, I'd like to thank our premier partner, Green Book, for their wonderful year-round support of the AMA New York, and um, also our team of super talented volunteers who are the engine behind everything we do here at AMA New York. They make it possible to offer exceptional programming like today's master class. The American Marketing Association New York is dedicated to raising the profile of marketing, providing professional development and networking opportunities, and serving as a vibrant source of marketing industry events and news. At AMA New York, we strive to inspire, support, and celebrate brilliance in marketing. Um, if you join us as a, an AMA New York a member, you have access to a rich treasure trove of data tools, opportunities, career development, mentoring, networking, and much, much more. And one of the best benefits of membership um, is the opportunity to volunteer. By volunteering, you can showcase your, your talents as well as develop new skills. And you can do this while meeting and working with wonderful people who can benefit you both personally and professionally. So if you're not a member, join today and sign up to be one of our brilliant volunteers. Let me finally get to our um, amazing presenter, Mukesh Patel. I met Mukesh last fall when he presented a Rutgers Business School faculty meeting. And I have to tell you, faculty meetings aren't known for being exciting or even you know, sometimes even interesting. But Mukesh's talk was so much fun. I had to find out who is this man? And when I did, I discovered, whoa, that Mukesh was not just interesting. He is an absolute force of nature. Now you've read a bit about his bio on the registration page so that you know that he's helped more than a thousand startups. He's also co-founded 10 ventures and invested in 30 businesses. And, you know, along the way, I mean, he started this journey as a lawyer. He did a bunch of things before becoming a lawyer, but, you know, he's had a lot of twists and turns along the way. Um, he's also um, had the pleasure of whining and dining with NASA astronauts, well-known enter um, entertainers, leading CEOs. He's also performed as an actor and producer um, all, as well in theater and films. He's found the uh, time to travel somehow to 37 states and 20 countries. And he's also studied five languages. And that's just a small part of all the stuff that he does. But that will give you a tiny flavor of where he gets his creative, innovative entrepreneurial spirit. And now it's time to get you in the mood to be creative and entrepreneurial. So to warm things up, let's start off with a game, two truths and a lie. So you know a bit about Mukesh Patel now. Um, so I'm gonna make, um, we're gonna uh, launch a poll with three statements about Mukesh and you're going to identify the lie. So the first statement, so uh, if we could launch the poll, the first statement is, he has a habit of getting kicked out of casinos. The second is he's currently fascinated by women's cosmetics and baby pacifiers. And the third statement is his secret hobby is writing a sci-fi series about the first colony to Mars. Which one do you think is the lie based on what you know about our wonderful Mukesh? Can everybody see the results? Great. All right, Mukesh. Take it away, tell them which one is the lie. <laughs> and 
um, begin your wonderful master class. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And the lie is the second one, secret hobby of writing a sci-fi series. The other two are actually correct, and I will briefly touch upon those in this presentation as well. By way of background, the two multiple times of getting kicked out of casinos is because I love experimenting with game theory. And if you've ever read the book or seen the movie called 21, where a bunch of MIT students kind of cracked the code and were kicked out of casinos, I've experimented with doing similar things. And I work with students to um, look at something called breaking the rules. And so the first time I got kicked out of a casino was when I was underage. And I, I was surprised because I had gotten in many times and studied these games. And all of a sudden, I was you know, a year older and they kicked me out, but not old enough, I guess. The another time I was kicked out of a casino was in the country Monaco. I was in Monte Carlo and ended up for research wanting to see what the most unique casinos in the world look like and happened to somehow get into a casino um, where the minimum bet per roll is $1 million. And I was studying game theory through that until they caught me and then I was kicked out, of course. Uh, but then I was invited back. And uh, so a lot of interesting things. Um, the cosmetics and the pacifiers, that I'm gonna actually show you two interesting ideas uh, in this presentation. So let me share my screen. Um, there is neuroscience research out there that says one of the most powerful techniques to spark creativity and innovative thinking is called high speed immersion. This is where you bombard your brain with lots of stimulation and ideas and images in a compressed period of time until it kind of hurts. And so what I'm going to attempt to do today is do what every faculty in the world is told by their students to never do. So uh, as part of breaking rules, here it goes. You've heard of death by PowerPoint. Well, I'm going to attempt to do death by PowerPoint but in a very different, unique way where actually it could be interesting and engaging. So I'm going to show you 110 plus slides in the next 43, 44 minutes, uh, plus or minus. And it's going to be a visual immersion. So lots of stories, lots of fast moving. And so just kind of buckle up. I just got back from a trip to uh, Disney, Hollywood Studios, um, Universal uh, Theme Park, NASA visiting Art, um, Blue Origin, SpaceX, um, Kennedy Space Center. And the one thing I loved is any ride where you have to strap in. So ready to go? All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Innovation and Creativity Lab. Breakthrough ideas to ventures and hopefully unicorns. There's also something called decacorns, and we'll talk about this in a moment. So very brief background context, it's always helpful to understand the lenses. If you think of a digital camera or any kind of uh, SLR, single lens reflex camera, there's these lenses. And so for innovation and creativity, it helps to take multiple lenses and connect the dots. So in 30 seconds to 45 seconds, here's my formal background. I was headed towards med school, thought that was a little, uh, a little bit of where I would get bored. I wanted something more exciting and interesting. So I ended up studying econometrics with a secondary in cinematography, another secondary in computer science and technology, and then got my doctorate in law, uh, focusing on startup law and, and business law, and um, worked for large companies, public companies um, in the space of technology and innovation. Initially, um, learned how to code at a fairly young age. I think I was about 15 when I learned Fortran and all these old school computer science programs. Um, and then became an angel investor, which led to co-founding a private equity venture capital firm. Um, and over the last 25 years, co-founded about 10 companies in six different industries. Then joined academia to disrupt and innovate in academia. 
everything from universities, grad school, undergrad, high schools, then launched a advisory practice, which I'll briefly talk about in the presentation as well, where we basically help disrupt, innovate at breakneck speed to create breakthrough ideas. Um, this could be for individuals, it could be for companies, it could be for interdisciplinary teams, it could be for someone looking to transition careers or wanted to come up for an idea to pitch on Shark Tank, for example, or win competitions nationally or globally, or launch scalable companies. Let's say zero to 10 million, 10 million to 50, 50 to 100 million, 100 to quarter billion, quarter billion to half of, um, you know, 500 million to 1 billion plus in terms of valuation. In a nutshell, the, the, the lenses that I'm going to kind of connect the dots. Um, my website is profmukeshpatel.com. Feel free to connect and collaborate there. This whole process started about 10 years ago when I was infatuated with the concept of creativity. And I, it led me on this journey to study the lives and works of people like Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein, Bach, musical artists, creative artists agency, all sorts of like creative geniuses and studying how do you spark creativity? Um, one of the things I always found was that uh, having done well academically, but I was always bored and never inspired. I had a lot of fantastic teachers, but a lot of terrible teachers, a lot of terrible professors along the way. And I wanted to disrupt that. And so I said, there's new ways of thinking about creativity and implementing it in your business, in your career, in companies and in innovation. So through that, started thinking about comfort zones and fears and failures and like, what causes people to fail? Why do ideas fail? Is it the idea? Is it the person? Is it the mind? And it led me, led me into this whole journey of studying cognitive science uh, and re doing research there in this theory called neuroplasticity, how your brain kind of has these synapses and rewires itself for creative output and started looking at neurons and neural connectivity and how that parallels with cognitive computing and quantum computing on the geeky side. So I'm like an ultimate tech enthusiast, nerd, geek, but also love all things creative and, and business and strategy. So there's a saying that says, the magic happens at the edge of your comfort zone. That's not good enough. So we need to take that further. What does that mean? So the concept is that there is multiple zones and the comfort zone is only one of them. There's actually multiple zones going from comfort zone into fear zones, into learning zones, growth zones. And then when you pierce the growth zone, you get into this nirvana of creative, innovative thinking. Each one of these zones is layered. Um, one of the most favorite things that I'm fascinated about is something called agile learning. How do you learn almost anything really fast? You know, going broad and deep at breakneck speed. And so we've experimented this with high school kids that were getting C's in courses like physics and chemistry or math or English. And then within two weeks, they get A's. All of a sudden, they go from, I hate this class, I hate this teacher, to this is interesting. This is fascinating. We've experimented that at the college level, at the grad school level. Um, and then Steve Jobs, his wife, um, Laurel uh, Powell, she has a foundation that she runs on reimagining high school. And so we competed. I built a global team. We made it pretty far and came very close, but did not win the $10 million grand prize. But in the process uh, of forming this super school, we ended up with an 80-page research paper that we had drafted on how to basically disrupt high school and turn it into an opportunity to create phenomenal students and great experiences. And then Thomas Edison, I was always interested. So I started in Menlo Park. Today, when you say Menlo Park, people say California, but the original Menlo Park was right here in Edison, New Jersey. So I went there and started studying the original ecosystem because he didn't invent the light bulb. He improved the light bulb, but more than the light bulb, he created the ecosystem that allows light bulbs to thrive. Without that ecosystem, the light bulb is meaningless. Um, and so 
went from there to the oranges in New Jersey and looked at all of his offices and inventions, then found uh, Edison Papers, which is a research academic institute at Rutgers University, talked to the executive director. And then I serendipitously came across this woman by the name of Sarah Miller Caldecott, the great grandniece of Thomas Edison. Met with her for coffee and extracted some interesting insights for rapid pace of innovation and failures and successes. And these were the five things that I took away from that coffee chat. Collaborator, persistence, communicator, knowledgeable, and associative thinker. Pattern recognition, connecting the dots. The one of these I disagree with. One, half disagree with. Persistence is meaningless without the other side of the coin. It's called pivot. You need to pivot. You cannot just be persistent. And then knowledgeable, after studying like the, the co-founders of Google and the CEO of Google and, and researching some things, and uh, from MIT and Carnegie Mellon, I came across some very interesting research that says knowledge is not what we're after. We're after something different. And it's called experiential learning, not knowledge. For the last several hundred years, education is built where you're, you memorize and then you vomit, you regurgitate everything on a multiple choice test, right? Or, or an essay or a problem. But if you give the same assessment to any student the next day, performance goes down. A week later, a month later, a year later, forget it. There's no, there's no, we've got no chance. So all that time spent memorizing to collect knowledge is really not the best strategy. It's experiential learning. So I took some of this and then looked at how Albert Einstein and the theory of relativity and how, how all of that kind of applies where imagination and experiential learning or agile learning is way more important than knowledge because knowledge is static and limited and all this other stuff, there's no ceiling. It's unlimited. So where can we go from here? Came across this great research on individual and team innovation and discovery. Just look at the words in bold, collaborate, investigate, interdisciplinary, um, significant impact, community of scholars, new perspectives, unpredictable breakthroughs, and dramatic. That led me onto this other journey for about 10 years. And I'm going to bring it back to something called centers of innovation research. So I started thinking, I need to develop these centers, these kind of programs or labs or incubators or accelerators. And that might be the key. So over the last seven years, I've, from scratch, developed three innovation and entrepreneurship labs, two programs, one creative co-working space, about 20,000 square feet, where we had 100 startup companies incubating, one clinic, one tech accelerator, and 12 courses. Now, these courses are across multiple universities, mostly at Rutgers University, which has 70,000 plus students. It's a 254-year-old academic uh, institution um, with a lot of you know, first-time students, first-generation students. One of the most, President Obama gave his commencement, commencement speech there, commencement speech there as a living president in office. And he said, it's one of the most diverse academic institutions in the world. And so it's a public research university. It's part of the Big Ten Network. But when I joined Rutgers, I had seven requirements. And I said, if the university satisfies six of these seven, I'll join and commit a lot of time and effort. And one of the requirements was I cannot be pigeonholed in one school, in one department, in one subgroup. That's not going to work. If you want to disrupt or innovate education, we have to break down the silos of traditional thinking and start creating this interdisciplinary approach. So my students come from the business school, engineering school, law school, pharmacy and medical school, school of arts and science and computer science, and um, even media and um, arts and, you know, like cinematic arts and things like creative arts. This is amazing. When you put students of these backgrounds together, whether they have PhDs, masters, um, or bachelor's degrees, crazy things start happening. Because that's what the real world of innovation looks like. 
is diversity of thought, diversity of experience. Now, what came out of this experiment? Let's take a look. So, oops. So the first one is Juice Tank. This was my first incubator creative co-working space. We took 20,000 square feet. And then all of a sudden, there were 100 startup companies in here. Some of them were corporate spinouts from like amazing companies, like public companies, private companies from Silicon Valley to Silicon Alley. Some of them were individuals in search of an idea. Some of them were two or three people that said, we have an idea or a startup. How do we scale this thing? Um, or we're in search for new technologies or new frameworks and models. Had a great experience there. Then I built the innovation lab at the Honors College. This is our beautiful building overlooking the Raritan uh, River. And it's a place where the top 500 freshman students from across the university, all disciplines, get to live in their freshman year. Even the dean lives here. And it's a remarkable place to study where you can study outside or inside um, when the weather is right. And this was an experiment. We mapped out the entire business plan on a napkin at Starbucks with the deans before the building was built. And that became the central theme called social innovation for the Honors College, which is remarkable. We've had about in the last five years alone, well, the program's only five years old, I would say about 50 startup companies with social impact that came out of here. And some of them are uh, phenomenal stories, which you'll see. Next, for graduate studies in these two beautiful buildings, um, one is our flagship 100 Rock, and the other one is One Washington Park, which is the Audible building, company acquired by Amazon. We started something called CTEC, the Collaborative for Technology Entrepreneurship and Commercialization. This is for masters and PhDs in business, engineering, and STEM, where we kind of converge them together. We look at patents. We collaborate with um, the uh, US Navy, with uh, tech transfer within the university, but also other universities like from Israel, from Greece, uh, Athens, um, and now from uh, certain cities in India, and doing amazing things in commercializing ideas going from idea to technology, to product, to IP, to a strategy and a commercialization plan and investor pitch deck in 90 days. And we do this every semester with grad students. Then we co-founded the Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. Every founder of an idea needs lawyers and lawyers are expensive. So we decided to disrupt that. So we have a clinic that basically provides free legal services at no cost to founders. You have to qualify, which means you cannot have a lot of money in the company or minimal revenues, and you should not have raised a significant amount of capital. So it's for early seed companies that don't have a lot of financial resources will provide free legal services. Then we created something called Road to Silicon Valley Alley Program, RSVP, to fuse innovation and tech with entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship and design and bring students and um, enthusiasts who wanna build companies to the hubs of innovation from Silicon Valley, Bay Area, Palo Alto, San Francisco, to LA, to New York, to Boston, to DC, to Atlanta, Charlotte, Raleigh, Durham, Austin, Texas, which is now the new hub, Nashville up and coming, Miami, Tampa, of course, New York, New, New Jersey, Philadelphia, um, Silicon Alley. But the idea is to then bring it global, places like London and, and Tel Aviv or Mumbai or South Korea uh, in Seoul or uh, Singapore, all these amazing places where lots of innovation are happening, um, Montreal or Toronto, um, even South America. And then we started the CEO Forum to bring executive thinking to the entrepreneurial, creative, innovative space. So the chief entrepreneurial officer was born. And we have a number of people on this call today that are directors and officers of the CEO forum. Um, so connect with us there. After that came the BLT Tech Accelerator. This is part of the CUED, which is the Center of Urban Entrepreneurship and Economic Development, where we said, okay, how do we help minority and underrepresented founders who have ideas or want to come up with ideas, Black founders, 
Latinx women co-founders. There's not enough capital being allocated to them and there's not enough seats in the boards for them. So we decided to change that. We raised a venture fund around this idea. And for the last five years, we've helped about 50 startup companies launch and scale. Some of them have raised upwards of a million dollars of seed funding now. They've gotten into some of the top tech accelerators in the world. We're super, super excited about this potential called BLT. Then came this interesting experiment, which is a signature award-winning course called ICE, Innovation, Creativity, and Entrepreneurship or Executive Thinking. This course became accepted into the Big Ten Open Alliance, where we had students from all the Big Ten universities um, participating into this in this course. And it's unlike any other course that I've ever designed, developed, or taken. In fact, most students tell us this course was transformational in the way they think. It changed their lives, accelerated their careers, got them into phenomenal companies and internships, um, launch companies and scale them. And before designing this course, I visited the top 20 business and engineering schools, STEM schools in the country and in the top 10 countries as well. Then went back to the drawing board with a white slate and basically said, reinvent this concept from scratch. So we collaborated with students and faculty from some of the top public and private and Ivy League schools um, in the US and globally. And that's how this course was born. Um, this is the culmination of everything so far. It's this concept of starting at X, transforming fluid thoughts into solid ideas. So we go 10X. Then we raise the bar again, 100X. How do we go from solid ideas to an actual innovative product or service? And then 1,000X. How do we create a business model that is disruptive or scalable? And then exponential X. How does the business model translate to an actual company or transforming an individual, your career? If you feel you've lost your mojo or your creative spark, how do we juice up that, that creative spark and transform the way the minds work into execution? So the result, based on this experiment of let's go big or go home, is that we collaborated over the last 20 years with 1,000 plus founders, executives, and entrepreneurs, helped launch 250 plus ventures with 100 plus investors, made 25 investments personally, read 100 books, researched 50 case studies, created a meetup group and an ecosystem where we had 7,000 members, including interviewing and collaborating with and, and doing workshops for CEOs of public and private companies, elite athletes, celebrities, political leaders from mayors to governors to presidents of countries to um, US Navy SEALs, even Team Six military people, and my favorite, world record holders. So record holders in sports, record holders in gaming, like Rubik's Cube or Tetris or other types of record holders, in, many of whom are in Guinness Book Book of World uh, Records. And through this process, the result is that we learned a lot about innovation and creativity. Now, that was the backdrop. Now let's go into some examples. What is creativity? What is innovation? One of the best definitions comes from the National Science Foundation. And because it adds this element of, of STEM in there. Uh, so basically, creativity is introducing new variables novel concepts and connections. Just remember those four key words, variables, novel concepts, and connections. Innovation is the implementation, adoption, and transfer of creativity. Innovation is a subset of creativity and imagination. When we talk about innovation, discoveries become tangible outcomes. Creativity is the fuel that's required to produce this tangible outcome. But don't forget serendipity. Serendipity is so powerful. Think about post-it notes. Think about all the mistakes and ima imaginative, amazing things come out of serendipity. The turn you take when you go out, the decision, should I turn left or right? If you turn left, you might run across 
and bump into someone you never thought you would meet. If you turn right, you may miss that person. Funny story, before I even knew who the CEO of Disney was, I happened to make a decision to break into a conference on media technologies, sat down for lunch, and right next to me sat, sat down this gentleman. We had these amazing conversations. I was about uh, 19, I think 19 years old, did not know who it was until later I realized that was the CEO of Disney and kind of these serendipitous connections that happen all over the place. Now, you must have seen this movie. I'm not going to tell you what it is just yet, but the only thing I'm going to say is if you said box of chocolates, you're correct. So just like life is like a box of chocolates, you never know which one you're going to get. Innovation and creativity, if you do it right, is this box of a thousand million chocolates. Let's call it zettabytes. Box of zeta chocolates, and you never know which one you're going to get. But if you play the game hard enough and long enough, trust me, the statistics and probabilities work in your favor. Okay, so then what is entrepreneurship? And who's an entrepreneur? Well, Collins Dictionary, interestingly enough, from 1828 says, it's a promoter of a theatrical production. Interesting. Entrepreneur, have you seen the movie about um, Barnum and Bailey Circus and where that came from? The, the true life story with, with um, Hugh Jackman? Well, it's kind of like that. He was an entrepreneur building this production, this theatrical production. Or if you look at like Cirque du Soleil, um, how that came about. Webster's Dictionary has the more traditional, someone who's willing to risk loss in order to make a profit. Wikipedia has its version of success versus failure, but mentions ecosystem. This is my definition. It's a phenomena that results when you fuse a mindset, skill set, and a tool set such that when executed with focus, persistence, pivots, and grit, has the potential to positively impact possibly even change the world. And then by definition, the entrepreneur is the human catalyst that causes this phenomenon. An entrepreneur is someone who does this inside of existing large companies or organizations. It's a very interesting space called entrepreneurship, corporate innovation. If we look at drivers of success in innovation and entrepreneurial success or creativity, um, there's a great TED talk by Bill Gross, the founder of Idea Lab where he evaluated more than 200 companies that they helped incubate and saw that timing was the most impactful, but it's one of the hardest to get right. What does it mean? It means you're not too early, premature, and not too late, where it's saturated. Just right. Team and execution always comes high. Then comes the business model and the idea, somewhat parallel, and funding lasts. Why? Because today, you can build billion-dollar companies with $5,000 of seed capital. Not every company, not every sector, but many. And if you had 10 to 50,000, you're in great shape. You have 100,000 to a million, phenomenal. In fact, the contrary is true. Sometimes the less initial seed capital you have, the more frugal and mindful of capital resource allocation you'll be to help you succeed even more rather than wasting money. Davos, ring a bell? World Economic Forum, WEC, Davos is in Switzerland. There's an annual World Economic Forum conference there where the greatest thinkers around the world kind of come together to explore interesting ideas. This came out of a study of several thousand CEOs of major companies globally. And they said the number one skill that can't be coded, so difficult to recruit people, but so critical, is creative and innovative thinking. Then leadership, then EI, adaptability, and problem solving. All this research led to interesting ideas. So here's my algorithm. It's fairly complex. It's actually in multi-dimensional layers. I'm just going to give you a simplistic view of it, of how it works. This whole space of the big idea for commercializing ideas. So to the left is status quo. That's everything that exists as of now the way things are done. You've heard the story. If you've had a great idea, someone says, no, 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 no. We don't do it that way. This is how we've always done it. And they dismiss your idea. Little do they know that your idea could be the winning idea. 
In fact, if you get more people to say not a good idea, like at least 100 people, chances are pretty good it's a brilliant idea. The reason people say not a good idea or no or will never work is because they cannot see into the future. They only know from the past. So you have to break through the status quo and then you start with something called thoughts. Thoughts through ideation turn into ideas by applying the pressure test of creative innovative thinking. Then you get to proof of concept or minimum viable product. That's basically a prototype or a pilot through R&D where you can test and learn. And then you apply execution throughout the whole process, but you ramp up execution here, entrepreneurial and entrepreneurial thinking, you get your results for outcome. And then what you do is you apply beta, which is perpetual improvement in creative innovative uh, iterations. And you go through this loop a million times at breakneck speed, very fast in an agile way. If you do this right, you will get to amazing outcomes. Um, the left side is knowledge, the right side is experiential learning. Because at the end of the day, you want to apply this theory called expert generalist. Become an expert in two or three areas, go deep, that's your depth. But then look at everything from different industries, breadth. This builds peripheral vision. Because remember the definition of innovation is the adoption and transference of information. So taking things from one or two different industries, not from your own, and then translating that leads to this T-shaped model. So in my ICE course, we did an experiment. We took all these students and we said, okay, how many of you have ever created an original piece of music, like an original song or a music video? Most said, we've never done that. Don't know how to do it. Don't have the skills. We sing in the shower. So that's all we do. Um, and then I said, what about artwork that can be commercialized? Most had never done that or thought about that. Then we tell them, you have five hours per student that you can spend in the next 30 days. And you're going to do two things that you've never done before. You know how in most courses, teachers and professors tell you, you can't cheat. You can't get someone else to do your work. We flipped it. We said, you can cheat. You can get anyone in the world to do the work for you. Learn how to delegate. Learn how to source talent. And you'll get credit for it. But the outcome you are responsible for. The vision, execution, and outcome is your responsibility. But you can delegate and recruit anyone in the world to help you with this. Figure it out. You have five hours. So three o'clock in the morning, students told me, you need to do these two experiments with us as well. So I did three o'clock in the morning. I sketched the thing on the left. It ended up being this artwork piece that's now being bidded on through different companies. I haven't sold it yet, but the bidding continues to rise. And I've created two or three different art pieces. This one is about ion, which is the positive, the positive chemical physical ingredient in creativity. All these words share that same three letter root. And then on the right side was I learned how to write songs. Now I'm not a musician, I can't sing. Just started taking piano lessons. Um, growing up, I played some drums, but not well. And so I learned how to co-write lyrics to a song, then recruited other talent that had never been recruited before and we ended up writing a song and then translated that into three different genres. This latest one, just because I came back from Disney, is in the theme of a Disney song. I'm gonna play you about 30 seconds of it. Here it goes. Now, these are all students.
Okay. So if you listen to the words, it's all about being a creator. It's about falling, but with every setback, having a comeback. Watch me rise, watch me fly, right? And the pain and the lessons learned along the journey. So this song, by the way, we're trying to develop and maybe license it to Disney for a future movie. So if any of you are connected in that space, we're always just two degrees of separation away from making something interesting happen. Reach out to us. Um, some of our students started creating these music videos and songs and artwork and commercializing it. And they never thought they had the ability to do that. So that was kind of pretty cool to go on that journey. Let's start with everything begins with an idea. True or false? Everything begins with a thought. A thought needs to translate into an idea. But if we assume that, okay, idea is the fundamental principle, it's not the beginning. So here's a homework assignment that I'm gonna give each of you, it's a challenge. It, how do you become an idea machine? Just be careful, because if you do this well, through effort and training, you're gonna have this curse that whenever you walk into a room or a place or talk to people, your brain will not stop. You're gonna come up with ideas to, to commercialize ideas, like products, new products, new services. And you, you won't be able to turn it off. It's harder to turn it off than it is to turn it on. It takes an effort to do this. You know, people say, are you born creative or innovative? Yeah, there's some fundamental principles that are innate that you have going for you, but most of it, the good news is, can be learned and taught. Absolutely. So the challenge is the following. I'm going to give you this assignment. We're not going to do it today. But if you do this assignment over the next 30 days and want to share the experience with me, reach out to me. I'm going to give you this challenge. Come up with 100 ideas in 100 minutes. They can be contiguous 100 minutes or spread, but no longer, but no more, spread no more than 24 hours. It has to be completed in less than 24 hours and less than 100 minutes. 100 ideas on how to improve products and services or new products and service. It can be incremental innovation. Let's call it zero to one like Peter Thiel, or it can be one where it's massive, disruptive, game-changing, innovative ideas or creative ideas. But remember the definitions of creativity and innovation and these frameworks apply them. And the way you do this is you start with a blank piece of paper called your ideation journal. And you don't just write words. You have to visualize some of the words. You have to sketch. This taps into different parts of your brain through neuroplasticity and starts connecting the visual cortex and connects the dots with critical thinking, creativity, creative thinking, innovative thinking, and visualization of information. Then you translate this into a spreadsheet, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. And this is what you do. You start building a small cohort of people that you trust, and you go through this divergent, convergent thinking process, where initially you start with fanciful, disruptive, wild, extravagant ideas. Then you apply critical thinking after that and think about um, converging those ideas, so solutions. So essentially, think of how do you think outside the box? What I want you to do is actually eradicate the box. Do it so that the box does not even exist. Don't worry about the idea being impractical initially. Every great idea that turned into billion dollar companies, at least 100 to 200 people who are experts said that idea will never work. Think about Uber, think about Airbnb, think about Nike, think about any of these Slack. Um, Slack was born out of a failed video game company. Um, the first thing they developed was Flickr and sold it to Yahoo, went back to the video game company, lost another $50, $100 million. Side hustle called Slack became a $22 billion company acquired by Salesforce in the last year. Um, it was a side hustle. So then think about when and where does creativity strike? So one of the things I want you to do is think about where are you when you feel you're in the zone? Here's a little research that shows 
that late at night or early morning are good time zones. Shower, brainstorming sessions, exercising, because something interesting happens with hormones in your mind, in your brain, when you exercise. But look at two things here. One is over cocktails, 5%. That should be way higher. 5% is misleading. At desk, normal work hours, 2%. That's a huge problem and a huge opportunity if you are a leader in a company. Why is it that during normal work hours, people don't feel creative and innovative? It's because the institution has crushed it. Just like academia has crushed the creative genius in students. So think of how you can flip that and change that rule. Then when you do your spreadsheet, you want to rate, apply this, these criteria and rate it on a scale of zero, which is weak to 10, which is commercially viable. One, value proposition. What are you solving for? X, is it pain, relieving pain or providing gain, pleasure? Is it solving an unmet need? Two, is it differentiated or unique from the rest of the existing solutions that provide that value prop? Market size, is it big enough to be opportunistic? Competitive landscape, make sure you're not too premature or too late where it's saturated. If you say we have no competition, you're wrong. There's always competition. The best ideas in the world, at any given moment when they're being formed, there's at least 10,000 other people with the exact same idea. The question is who executes? Is it interesting? Does it tag into your passion? Are you leveraging domain expertise or strengths? Not only yours, but your co-founders and advisors and others, employees. Network effects. Are you using the theory of, forget about six degrees of separ separation of Kevin Bacon. It's now 3.5 degrees of separation in this world. Is it simple versus complex? Because speed is a key. You gotta do this fast. You can't think about it for a long time. And is it scalable? Well, guess what? If you get all the above ones roughly correct, you don't need every single one of them. But if you get most of them correct, it will be scalable. And then is it fundable? Well, if you get scalable, right? Fundable comes into play right away. I've used these strategies in a number of companies and I've managed to raise $30 million of equity in my startup companies and over 130 million of debt for those companies just by figuring out this ideation process of commercial viability. Here's a framework, think big, really big, start small and then run like there's no tomorrow, scale fast. It's because it's not about the ideas, it's about making ideas happen, change. Everyone says things are moving so fast. That used to be level one, because change is a constant. It's the only thing that doesn't change, is change. Now we're at this thing called Industrial Revolution 4 point something. It's not even 4.0. It's accelerated exponential disruptive change. It's changed to the fourth power. So what are some examples? How do we deal with this? Well, and why, what's causing this? This is what's causing it. High performance computing called quantum computing as we approach it. Global broadband connectivity. Scientists are working on 6G and 7G right now. We haven't even begun to see 5G. They claim it's there. They're not really releasing full 5G to us just yet. Cognitive computing. Innovative platforms like software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, AI, machine learning, deep learning, blockchain, internet of things, data proliferation, material science, genetics, automation, crowdsourcing, crowdfunding. This is what's causing change to the fourth power. Forget about 5G. If you look at 6G, it blows things away. IOTs, every device is now a smart device. Think about Peloton. Think about Ring, doorbell, Simply Safe. Um, the exponential curve for IOTs and the data that's being produced. Today, it's no longer bytes or megabytes or gigabytes or even terabytes. 
It's zettabytes, one zettabyte, 1,000 to the seventh power. More data was created in the last 24 months than the entire previous history of humankind. 2015, we had 10 zettabytes of data. This past year during the pandemic, 44 zettabytes. That's 44 trillion gigabytes. Less than 1% is analyzed. Think about marketing data, marketing technology. Here's what happens in 60 seconds. Netflix, close to 100,000 hours of streaming video. Um, Amazon, 1,200 packages. Reddit, 2,000 posts. Bitcoin, Google, Tinder, Venmo, Uber, Spotify. The list goes on and on and on every 60 seconds. Every time I print this, I find this chart. Six months later, these numbers have exponentially changed. Today, these aren't even the real numbers anymore. This was last year, 2020. Let's look at the impact. Do you remember companies that used to be mainstay and now they're gone? Remember this? Pan Am? Maybe some of the older folks? Or even things like this? Nokia and BlackBerry, right? These were leaders at one time in their space. How about Kodak? Um, 50 years of innovation and then basically disrupted. Look at this, a company that in 96 had a market cap of $28 billion with 140,000 plus employees. In 2012 went bankrupt with 17,000 employees the same year that Instagram in 15, months with 13 employees, very young kids essentially, created a market cap of a billion dollars, the new Kodak moment as we call it. It's not that Kodak didn't have the expertise of digital photography, they've had that expertise since 1975. Or what about this company? Remember that experience? I used to love going into Blockbuster stores, but I love Netflix even more. Or what about, oops, Circuit City, Radio Shack, some of them still exist, Fortune Off, Sears. If you look at sectors, today there's 16 sectors. Take any sector, add the word tech, add the word innovation, and now it's totally new and disruptive. MarTech for marketing technology, beauty tech, food tech, ag tech, ad tech, sports tech, you name it, media tech, fintech, AI disrupting every industry in ways we cannot even begin to comprehend. Mukesh, let me just interrupt. I, I think that if we can stay over, it sounds like Mukesh is willing to stay over and I think that would be just fine. But if you have to leave, um, please uh, click this link. I just put the link in the um, chat and I'm gonna put it in again. We'd love to hear your feedback on this. A recording will be uploaded to the website. And Mukesh, we had one question. Yep. Uh, will we be able to also share a copy of your slides? Would that be okay? So we'll talk about that because we okay. might do something very interesting. Okay, we'll um, talk about that afterwards. But yep. anyway, check back with the website. And if you can stay longer, Mukesh, So five more minutes. Okay. And I'm going to run through now speed. We're going to accelerate the speed. Okay. So we specialize in studying unicorns, which are private startup companies that reach a billion dollars of valuation without going public or taking public money. Very interesting things. Think about this, 40% of Fortune 500 companies will be displaced, replaced, or bankrupt in 10 years. Look at S&P 500 companies. 60, over 60 years ago, 1955, they used to last 60 years. Today, less than 15 years. Harvard had a great study called the C-Suite Needs a Chief Entrepreneur. Here's some trivia. Every slide has some hints. Do you know what company this is? It's Honest Tea. When I met with the founder, Seth, um, from Yale, he kind of launched this as a Yale startup. What was so unique or differentiated about Honest Tea? There were other iced teas out there. He just reduced the sugar. S simple as that. How creative is that? And how much is that worth? Reduce the sugar. Well, Coca-Cola acquired a 40% stake for 100 million and then bought the balance of the company for an undisclosed sum. What about these people? They founded Method Soap. And now every soap company wants to look like them. What did they do? Two things, reduce toxicity in the chemicals and beautify the packaging. 
What about these people, Warby Parker? Will people buy eyewear without touching and feeling them over the internet? Yes, most people said not a good idea. Their faculty from Penn and Wharton refused to even, declined to even invest in the company. Or this guy, Kind Snacks. What's so interesting about Kind Snacks, they were one of the first bar companies to create transparent packaging and less ingredients. Or this guy, Jersey guy. He created, reinvented toothpaste and oral care called Hello Products. Everything from lip balm to charcoal black toothpaste. So if every toothpaste looks white, he created the black charcoal toothpaste and other types of interesting products. Colgate just bought his company for a massive amount. Or Dyson, 4,000 prototypes to remove a bag from a vacuum cleaner. What does Dyson do? Dyson is in the business of moving air, essentially. Think about this. If you ask 100 people to re-innovate a fan, they would all start with the blade and re-innovate at the fringes. This guy removed the blade. You can stick your hand right through that fan, and it's a phenomenal product. In fact, I was crazy enough to pay $350 for a hairdryer for my daughter. She said after trying the Dyson hairdryer, she'll never go back to any other hairdryer ever again. So these are some things we launched in our innovation labs. We saw that over 2 billion people worldwide have contaminated water. We started with this question for safe water, for disaster areas in developing countries. How do you do it without electricity or moving parts? And this was the problem. So we traveled to a couple of countries. These are all 18 to 22 year old students. And we discovered a titanium catalyst that when the sun hits it, it sanitizes the water. This is our first model. And then we turned it into solar panels that sanitize water. Think of it as water panels. So you can create a whole array on, on a building or et cetera. And once the sun hits our catalyst, our proprietary technology, it can sanitize your water. And these students file for a patent before they even graduated college as undergrads. We've also won um, placed in the top 10 in the Hulch Prize out of 80,000 teams that competed around the world. Um, at MIT and Harvard, we took some awards, um, came in third in the entrepreneurial organization at Silicon Valley, uh, startup grind competition, uh, crazy amazing things, about fifty dollars to $100,000 in awards and prizes and patents. Then came this other idea, infant micronutrients. What about women or mothers who cannot breastfeed or infants who are malnutritioned? 150 million children under five are malnourished. So we came out with a smart pacifier. And this pacifier is phenomenal because it can safely give micronutrients to infants, especially for mothers who cannot breastfeed. And now we're working, we've uh, filed for patents and just scored about $100,000 in awards and prizes, non-diluted funding from competitions. Um, also have a major hospital physicians and pharmacy group collaborating with us to bring this to the market now. President Clinton even invited our student founder on stage at the Clinton Global Initiative and the student then got Forbes 30 under 30 and like unbelievable stuff that's happening. We had another student who just got a phone call from Chelsea Clinton because she's interested in what that creation was out of our lab. So this is our company called VX, Vision or Ventures Accelerated. Here's another one, iron. Is it good for you? How much? What if you have excess iron? So a researcher out of NYU Medical School found that iron in your skin, if you have too much, causes aging. Through that, we have filed for multiple patents on this technology, and our products are hitting the retail market this summer. Um, it's called Ion Skincare, Age Disruptive Skincare. We brought onto our board former executives from some of the top cosmetic and beauty companies globally. And they think this is the next revolutionary disruptor in age defying skincare. What about virtual school during the pandemic? Do you have kids? How was their exam experience? Do you think there was cheating going on or bias against dark colored skin that cameras could not pick up? So we launched a company called Exam, Integrity and Assessments and Credentials. 
or Alexa or Google Home can maybe be used in commercial enterprises. What about data protection? Another company launched, Gabby, Global Artific Artificial Business Intelligence. Touchless, using voice and mobile apps for commercial enterprises. We already have state governments, um, federal government agencies, and corporations, major companies already as clients in this startup company. What about music education? What if you can learn music from famous artists globally, like Peloton workout subscriptions and Disrupt? So this company I'm on the board and invested in called Live Demi, masterclass by famous musicians globally. We're starting in India with Silicon Valley engineers and Canadian engineers, and then bringing it to North America and then other markets. Or sports tech, is there a better, safer way to bet on sports and entertainment and create positive social impact? So we looked at $85 billion in sports betting, 8.3 in fantasy sports, 70 million fantasy sports players, but no fantasy sports book, no safe betting or education and no impact. So we created Better Fantasy. The world's first fantasy league sports book where if you lose, your charity wins. So we're creating social impact through education in, sm in um, smarter betting, essentially. Or cars, what if you don't need to buy a car or own a car in the future? Forget leasing. So forget about buying, leasing, or renting, which is renting is only like one to 10 days. Leasing is like three years. So there's a company, one of my former students, he, he left KKR and Goldman Sachs to start this company, Defy Technology. Basically, a couple of clicks on your phone, you can subscribe to a car for as short or as long as you want with financing in place in literally 60 seconds or less. So we're piloting this and bringing it to the market next year. So then these are the last two slides now. What creative, innovative potential do you have or do your kids or your teammates have but has not been unleashed? onto the world. Can we collaborate to help you bring your ideas to life or to transform lives? So this is our company, VX. We provide, um, so you heard about this course, this ICE course. For the first time, we're gonna take it live globally. So it's not an academic course anymore, it's for adults. So it's for individuals or for corporations if they want it for teams. We can customize the course, 10 hours, 20 hours, 40 hours, one day, one week, one year, however you wanna do it. Number two, experience. We have three experiences. Creative experience is where we take this course, bring it to life in an office or a conference center or hotel. The innovator experience is where we do it in a retreat or a resort. And the disruptor experience is three to seven day experience. Once we identify the dates, we tell you what day to have your suitcase ready and you will be abducted. You will be blindfolded, picked up in a car, in a limo, and then we can't tell you anything else. It could be couples, it could be teammates, it could be executives from different companies, it could be an individual, it doesn't matter, but we take you on an experience of a lifetime um, with no limits. It might be on a cruise ship, might be in a private corporate jet, might be on an island, We'll bring in famous artists and musicians and orchestras and entertainment, and we'll bring in innovators and experts to help you take your idea or create an idea that you can scale and, and raise capital if you want, or it could be a new product that your company might be searching for, et cetera. And then we have advisory. We help you build advisory boards, minimum viable product as a service. So if you want, have an idea for a product or an app or software or a consumer product, we'll help you do that. It could be um, marketing at scale or if you need to raise capital. Those are the four things we specialize in in our advisory practice. So we invite you to connect and collaborate so we can together crush it and disrupt and innovate at breakneck speed. So thank you for your time. Sorry for going over by a few minutes. Um, but super excited about any questions and I'll stop sharing my screen.
So, I'll, um, so Mukesh, one way that I described Mukesh just before the um, today's master class was, you know, after meeting Mukesh, um, it's not like drinking out of one water hose. It's like drinking out of forty water hoses. So you just got a little drop of the flavor of Mukesh. And so, um, thank you for everybody who stayed behind. Please, um, Mukesh is open to taking a couple of questions, but please be sure to answer the survey. And just so that we can end with Mukesh, just a reminder that we have an event coming up on June 24th, which is all about advancing your marketing career. There's going to be a panel of marketing leaders who are going to talk about um, uh, what it takes to have a vibrant career at all levels. So do we have any questions for Mikesh? And you're ready to unmute yourself and ask them. And while we're waiting for a question to come in, let me ask Mukesh um, the first question. Mukesh, um, you brought up so many important points. And like you said, you know, you were inundating us um, with data to try to get these juices flowing. Um, what is, if there's only one takeaway that you wish people would take to heart and remember for the rest of their lives, what might that be? Don't underestimate your power of imagination, creativity, and innovative thinking. Most people underestimate it. They think it's X. It's That's really X to an exponent. That's so don't underestimate it. And it, it might seem daunting or hard in the beginning, but if you surround yourself with the right people, the right people who can help catalyze and spark or advise, you can, you can do phenomenal things. Um, Anastasia Paranikas wants to know, Mukesh, what is your favorite book? Uh, I have 250 of them. If you ever wanna see, I'm actually launching a book club um, with a twist. So it's coming soon. I have some information about it on my website. Uh, if you're interested, just uh, go to the website and uh, sign up for it so you're on a wait list. And then we'll let you know when it launches. But I would say my top three books, just off the top of my head, would be um, Disruptive Mindset, Think Bigger. Now I'm going to add it two more. Uh, Shoe Dog and The Hard Thing About Hard Things. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, so you guys, you have this vibrant, creative, um, divergent, you know, convergent, everything thinker. Any more questions for Mukesh or is everybody just too shell-shocked by this wealth of information? And I have one question, Yangmi. All right, If take there's it away. anyone listening, either live or to the recording, that feels that you've got amazing potential in digital marketing or marketing technologies and tools, to help scale ideas and companies, reach out. We're starting a meet, we're starting three companies this year. One's going to be a consumer product company. One's going to be a digital software technology company uh, to disrupt entrepreneurship using a black box theory. And then one's going to be a media marketing disruptive company agency. So if any of you are out there, we're looking to expand our team with collaborators and partners, reach out to me so we can talk or grab some coffee. Thank you. And what did I tell you? AMA New York is the place for personal and professional opportunities.